Hey, how are you YouTube? Today we're going to start the second episode of the Belly Dragger XES10 building project. The plan is to install and walk through the axles, the chocks, gearbox, and electronics. My name is Santiago Salinas and this is the Stuff RC. Let's start with the chocks. For this project, I decided to use the Traxxas GTS chocks that were originally designed for the TRX4 platform. Yet, I consider them one of the best options in the market and now I'm pretty sure that they will be a great match for this building project. Okay, let's put them together. The first thing you have to do is fill the chuck leaving a gap of around a quarter of, in of an inch from the edge to the level of the oil to release the bubbles inside we have to move slowly the piston up and down i think this one is perfect okay guys the other the other advice i can give you is like a, once you already have the, uh, uh, the right level of oil leave the chuck rest for a, i would say like a 30 45 minutes in order to allow all those tiny bubbles that are inside it to go up and just disappear. Something important to mention is when you close the, the chuck, the piston has must be fully compressed. So the other thing is like uh, what you are looking for is when when you compress, once closed, when you compress the shaft, you are looking for this small re uh, rebound. And they are done. Once again, pretty nice chucks. I highly recommend them. So let's move forward with the project. So let's take a look on the next upgrade. DKKY was kind enough to send me this axle. The part number is um, X003V32683. And look at these beauties. Pretty nice box. Look at this, so beautiful. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about these axles. First, the housing is made from aluminum. Uh, they claim uh, that the, all the internal gears and shaft are made from, uh, from steel. Uh, also, we will get 45 degrees of steering angle, plus the actual axle is designed with an eight degrees uh, inclination angle. You can see it right here. To avoid scratches on the actual housing, uh, they are providing with this stainless steel skid plate. I will say I'm a little bit worried about these two screws that holds them because I think they will get stuck in, in obstacles. We'll see, time will tell because as I mentioned, it has an eight degrees inclination, so it sh maybe it won't, it won't be a problem. Uh, in addition, uh, the gear relation is uh, eight to 30 teeth. So I, appreciate, I think it will be cool. Uh, let's see what is inside the box. Uh, of course, we have the, the, the front uh, axle. We have the rear axle, pretty, pretty nice. Once again, uh, aluminum housing, uh, steel, uh, cha uh, steel uh, gearing and shafts. Uh, all, the, all the hardware, I would say that it's stainless steel. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I will say that this is a five millimeter nuts. Uh, yep, I would say so. Uh, let's see what else is inside the box. Uh, we are getting a, a servo horn, a really nice servo horn. Uh, the necessary hardware to put these axles together. I will assume that these small arms or these small pieces are for the servo. By the way, these are these are designed to be a, a an axle mounted servo. Oh. Here are the, 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 the servo mounts. Uh, I really love these anodized uh, diff covers. Pretty, pretty cool. The machining looks great. I really like them. Uh, also, it's included the, the steering link. 
These are pretty nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is stainless steel. They are not including a, a user manual. <laughs> so we have to figure out how to put this one together. I don't, I don't think it will be a rocket science. Okay, let's take a look on those uh, gears that are inside here. I really like what I'm seeing here. First, uh, they are well greased. That does, that's always a, that's not always a plus. Uh, I can see right here, I can see right here a uh, bearings. That's good. So these retainers are made from aluminum that are pretty much the housing for the, for the bearings. Let's close it and let's take a look on the rear axle. Once again, this front axle also has our well greased uh, diff, diff uh, gearing. So now that I'm, I'm sure that they are well greased, we can close them and I think we can move forward to install them. So let's proceed to install the servo mount. And it's done. I've already put some thread locker in these two screws, also in these three, plus the one that are holding these servo mounts. Okay, let's move forward. Here's where I am right now. So if you remember, I had some trouble with the articulation. So I decided to move these links right here. But the problem with that is, as I mentioned, that the angle for the steering knuckles wasn't the right one. It wasn't, it, uh, it was facing, the knuckles were facing the, the, the it were, it were it, they had these angles, so they were facing the actual chassis. So that, that will affect if you re, if you leave the, the knuckles like that it will affect your steering angle in 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 a very bad way so what i did is i replay i i i moved the links once again from this position to here these links right here i add these spaces the spacers that actually come with the with the with the kit and I move them from the front position to the to the to the to this position. So that gives me a really good a really good uh, angle for the steering knuckles. And I'm still have I would say I have a good articulation. So let's continue and let's place let's install the rear the rear axle. So let's move forward with the chucks. For the chucks, by the way, uh, the kit actually uh, comes with these spacers. So uh, these are the ones we're gonna use. Uh, but let's move forward to see what happens. So here's another. I would say I won't call them an, I call them I call it an issue, but I will have to replace these pivot balls since they don't fit in this in this gap right here. So so actually I have some pivot balls, some spare pivot balls, and this one do fit there. So the part number is the Traxxas 2742X. Just to you to know, I already removed the the old pivot balls and I already installed two of the new ones, and this fits perfect. I had to play a little bit with the with the length of the links because at the beginning uh, when I installed them, the, it, uh, the this chalk was was rubbing the the chassis, but now it's perfect. I really like it. I really like the result. Uh, so let's move forward with this and let for the transmission. I I I. I will use one of the cheapest transmission I, 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 I ever bought. This is aluminum housing. This is plastic. Uh, it looks cheap, actually. And it comes with the, with the motor gear. And let's see what is inside. 
Well, actually, we have a this is a metal uh, gear. We have a actually we have an, a, a lip and, and slipper clutch right there. I'm pretty sure of that. Let me check. So as I said, there is a slipper clutch. Well, this is nice. I mean, it is okay. I won't complain about it. So I wonder what is inside here. Let's see. So inside here, wow, we do have actually metal gears. I really like them. Yet I have to say here we have bushings instead of bearings. Uh, we have bearings there. Well, it is okay. It's not bad. And it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel cheap. I would say we have a bearing here and a bushing here. Eh, I think this is an easy fix. It's easy to to replace this these bushings for bearings. So I think I'm gonna install it in the way it is. I'm gonna put some grease here. Uh, it looks dry. So let's put some grease. Let's put it together again and let's see how does it fit. Okay, the transmission is already assembled. Uh, I would say that it's okay. It feels great actually. It feels smooth and we'll see once it's, it is working. Okay, let's move forward with the project. For this project, we're gonna use the Crawlmaster Sport uh, 550 12 turns. Um, I really love this motor. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's, it's great actually. So what? But what I'm planning to do right now is to install the motor in the transmission in order to see how does it fit because I'm quite worried about these links. Uh, we'll see. So I already installed the transmission with the, the, the transmission with the or the gearbox with the motor installed and uh, if you see right here actually the link touched the motor a little bit when it's when when it's in in, in its full travel touch it a little bit there you, you see i think i can live with that yes yet it is not ideal i, I would recommend and this is something uh, so this is something that someone in 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 my previous video comment in a uh, comment that actually he recommend to use a 540 for this specific chassis and he's totally right and for the esc and the receiver my plan is to use this ssd um fuel cell pretty cool pretty nice uh, my plan is to install it back here so the part number is SSD00289. Pretty, pretty cool. This is actually a receiver box. Very, very nice. Uh, but I have to say this receiver box is not waterproof. Right here is where the cables uh, will come out from. And there is no foam or anything that blocks the... the the water uh, to go inside there. So I would recommend to use like a balloon or something. In my case, I'm gonna put some grease right here in order to, to seal the, the, the case. And I'm gonna look for some uh, foam, uh, like a, a waterproof foam in order to put it here. Here is where I am right now. As I mentioned, I used that, this uh, small uh, plate right here to install this. Uh, fuel cell, as you can see, uh, I screw them right here and actually it's a perfect match. So the chassis already had, uh, it's already designed to accept this plate right here in this position. So it was perfect. Uh, so I already installed the, the fuel cell. So this is done and let's move forward. Let's talk about the electronics we're gonna use for this project. First, the servo. We're gonna use the FT846VL uh, servo from Fitech. Uh, Fitech was quite kind enough to send me this servo in order to, to test it and to show you this review. 
Uh, so they claim that the servo delivers 32.5 kilograms or 13 ounces running on six volts or 40 uh, kilograms or 46 ounces running on a uh, 7.4 volts, right? The speed for this servo is uh, 0 0.185 or uh, 185 uh, seconds or running on six volts or a uh, or 0 0.151 seconds running on 7.4 7 se volts. So this is pretty impressive, it's pretty cool. Uh, it pretty much it, it has a standard size. It's a, really, a little bit tall, I will say, but it's what is expected from this kind of servo. So I already have it out of the box and look at this, so cool. Uh, the whole the whole uh, servo or the case of the servo is made from aluminum, pretty pretty nice. Um, and all the all the gearing, uh, all the gears that has been used on it are made from uh, from steel. So pretty cool. Uh, we will see once it's installed and running. But on paper it looks great. And once we try it, I'm pretty sure it, it won't disappoint. Next, we will use uh, an old friend of all of us. Is the Hobby Win uh, 1080. This is the Gen One. Uh, this motor, this motor with this ESC is, uh, it, I mean, they work like a charm. I mean, this is this is a, the, a great match. Uh, so what else? And finally, for the transmitter, we'll be using the. Let me move a little bit the camera. We will be using the the GT5 from a uh, fly sky and this is for me if not the best one of the best uh, radio controllers for the or, or, or one of the best transmitters from for the crawler world uh, okay let's move forward i i have to solve the 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 motor and the esc i'll be back in a sec Okay, I already sold the ESC to the to the motor right here. I won't say that is the best of my jobs, but but it, it will it will do the job. Um, so and it's funny because I was about to to install the the receiver and transmitter and program the transmitter, but and then I realized that I forgot something super important: the drive shafts. <laughs> so. For the drive shafts, uh, this specific chassis has a special configuration since all the weight is 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 torn to the to the front. So you will require a really short uh, front drive shaft and a really long one for the rear one. So I bought uh, the ones recommended by Injura for this kind of chassis. Uh, right now I don't remember the exact length, but I'm gonna put them in this description right here. Uh, so let's do it and install them. I have small problem here because um, when I try, try to pass through the shaft and the, the the drive shaft and the shaft of the of the differential, they don't they don't line up perfectly so I cannot I'm not able to to screw the, the this screw <laughs> so let me see what I can do with that first I just realized that right here there is a retainer that is the one that is causing the trouble so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove it So this is the retainer I just removed. Uh, it, it, so you, I don't see that this chaff goes anywhere. So, um, so I think we'll be good. Okay, drive five shafts are installed. Um, and for the rear axles, I have to do the same thing. It has like a that small retainer. Uh, I had to remove it in order to install the shafts, but I think it will work. I, I, I don't I don't think that will cause any troubles. Yeah. So and in the case of the ESC, we are gonna install it right here. The reason why is because I wa I don't want to block the any of these two screws right here in order to remove this slider. So it will go, it will go right here. 
and it's perfect since I have the perfect length for this for the for for the receiver right here. And I think it will work. Yeah, that's great. Okay, easy install. So now let's install the servo. Okay, the servo is installed. So now let's plug our electronics to the transmitter. In this case, um, the the throttle and brake uh, for the for this specific transmitter goes to the uh, channel two. So the ESC, we have to plug the ESC to channel two, and the steering goes into the channel one. We got it, guys. Let's install the steering links in order to be able to set the the servo the steering servo okay let's do it and it's done i'm gonna set it up uh, once i install the wheels uh, right now i'm gonna leave it like that um just let's see if it's actually moving wow the servo is pretty it's pretty quiet and it's really good reacting i'm gonna set the, the as i said i'm gonna set up uh i'm gonna i'm gonna make the setting of the of the servo once i install the wheels but right now i really like what i see uh, wow plenty of power too Really, re this is a really strong servo. I really love it. Great job here, Fitek. I really like it. So here are my final thoughts. First, the axles. The axles are pretty neat. I really love the machining. I really love the look. They actually look and feel like a high quality items. The shaft are made from uh, steels. Also the internal, the, all the gearing for the differentials are made from steel and they feel pretty solid. I really love them. Time will tell like uh, if, if this is the case once we are running this truck. Uh, this chapter wasn't related with the chassis yet I have to say some stuff. Now that I put everything together, the chassis is not that straightforward. It's not a straightforward chassis. I had to put a lot of thought in some, for example, when I install the, the, the axles, uh, my my uh, shocks were rubbing the, the actual chassis. So I had to play with the length of the links. You will have to make a lot of tuning in order to get a, a, re a good setting, a setting that will work with this. Uh, for example, I'm a little bit concerned about the front axle, not because of the axle, but for the the, the geometry of the, of the, of the chassis. Uh, as you can, it's, I don't know if you can see how how the, the the axle has this movement. It rotates a little bit when when it goes up. The other thing is I don't, I'm not getting that much travel in the front axle, and and the reason why is because these uh these links uh, are too short, and I don't feel that happy with these uh, bended links that they offer in it. You can change them. Actually, I think this is what I'm gonna do. Instead to install, uh, I'm gonna change this, this, um, these links, and I will use this location instead of this one. And I'm gonna get some shorter links in order to get a better articulation. And I think when if you do that, I don't think you have to change these bended links. Uh, next one. The, mo the, the motor, I won't talk uh, that much about it. It's a Crawlmaster Sport uh, of 12 turns. This is a great motor. It's an amazing product. So there's not, not much to say that. Same story with the for the Hobby Wing uh, 1080. This is one of the best ESCs for, if not the best ESC for uh, if, you, if you have a brush configuration in your truck. So it is amazing. Uh, next, uh, we have the 
the the transmission this is as i mentioned this is a super cheap transmission like it's quite noisy uh actually i'm a little bit, a bit concerned about it we'll see how how does it perform but my advice to you is i'll be brutally honest i will go for a better option buy one of those stealth uh, transmission from a uh, element a uh, from element rc or go with the actual axial uh, stock transmission. If not, you can you can buy a a hobby a hot racing transmission. They have a, a low center of gravity transmission. Pretty nice for this for this truck. That is, I think, is the one I'm gonna I'm gonna get for it. Everything inside of this transmission is made from from metal. I, I will say steel. Uh, the housing is made from uh, aluminum. Um, it has a lot of play, and this is what I, how why I don't, I don't like it. Maybe with if I install some bearings replacing those bushings that it, it, it brings, maybe I will fix the problem. We'll see. Next, uh, this this uh, this uh, uh, box for the for the receiver, pretty nice. Uh, I mean, it's the the detail on, on it is great. I really love the way it looks. Pretty pretty nice. I will say it's, it's not a, a waterproof uh, a box, a, a, a receiver box. I will say that it's a uh, splash proof <laughs> in the best case uh, because of that. Because I think the, the easiest way to fix this is to put some foam in that in that small gap right here, like the one that actually tracks us over in their in their in their cover. Uh, sorry, in, in their receiver boxes. And, and, and then it will be a waterproof because this the, the whole box is well sealed. It's just this gap where the wires go into it that actually doesn't have any protection. So, uh, for the transmitter and receiver, uh, as I say, this is the the Skyfly uh, GT5. This is an amazing transmitter, and I mean, you have six channels. You have you have plenty of settings on it. It's great. Mm -hmm. Let's move for, let's move to the the drive shafts. I use the Injora drive shaft. Uh, and I have to say they look pretty solid. They look great. They, once again, this is not a straightforward chassis, so you need some customized. Uh, you will have to to buy uh, some customized options for these drive shafts. Uh, uh, yet they look great once you get the right the right the right length. It's really easy to install them. Uh, the servo. The servo is pretty nice. I mean, as I said, it's super quiet. It's crazy strong. Uh, right now I'm running it on six volts. For in the next uh, episode, I'm gonna make the setting in the ESC in order to run it in 7.4. So really strong at six volts, really strong. I won't say that it's that fast at this voltage, but I really like it. My only complaint with this one is that it is not waterproof. It's splash, it's splash proof. So that's the only complaint. Yet I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't drive my trucks uh, in water that often. So I think I will all be okay. But really, really cool, really cool uh, servo. I really like this. Is uh, this is a good option? Chucks, as I said, this is this. These are the ones that actually the TRX4 from Traxxas comes with. Uh, these are great chucks. I mean, this everybody knows that these are like a top notch, uh, notch uh, chucks. So what else? Uh, ah, the other thing I want to mention: this is a 10, uh, 550 uh, motor. So uh, I will I will recommend, and someone mentioned this in, in in the comments in my previous video. Use a 540, but I already had this one. That's why I, I didn't follow that advice yet. Thank you for, 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 for the advice. And I'm totally agree. For this, for this chassis, it's better to have a, a, five, a, five, a 540 because, because you are losing, the, 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 because of the lens, you are losing all the options you have here for your links. So I'm, I won't be a, I, I, I won't be able to change these blender links to with an straight one because of that. Because if I, I, I replace them for a straight links, I will have to use it in the inner part of the chassis. So, and I don't have enough space right here. So actually I'm gonna, and with time, I don't know, right now I'm gonna run it like that, but, but with time I'm gonna replace this motor for a 4, a 4 540 because it's the way it should be. I mean, it's, 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 it's meant to do that. So I think that's it, guys. Um, 
I feel pretty happy with this. <laughs> so I'm enjoying it a lot. For the next episode, we're gonna program the ESC. We're gonna install some wheels and in, in tires to this truck and we're gonna paint the body. So guys, thank you very much for joining me for this video. Uh, I hope it, it has been helpful for you. And once again, my name is Santiago Salinas and this is the Stop RT. Please subscribe and see you next week. Bye.